Welcome back to Dirt Gear TV. You guys saw in the last video, the steering system is now complete and it's working phenomenal. It is very, very fast. People for a while were asking me, did I ever think uh, power steering would be an option for this buggy? And my standard go-to answer would always be, Nah, I don't think the power steering is really needed. It's extra weight, and it's just not necessary. Now, with how fast the steering ratio is, I would have to say, yes, the power steering is absolutely something that I'm gonna be looking into here in the future. I always think about it a little bit more each time I picture myself going down the drag strip at 110 miles an hour. Uh, that that power steering would be really great to have. So definitely a possibility for the future. But for today's video, what we are doing is we're going to be comparing our blow off valve. Okay, you guys know I've been running one of these SK, what is it? SKQ, HKS, SSQ, HKS, SQ, whatever they are. They're very popular uh, blow off valves. I mean, they make a cool noise, but they're just a standard blow off valve. So any additional boost pressure that I've got in my charge pipe is being vented 100% to atmosphere through the blow off valve. Today, we're going to be installing this Turbo Smart recirculation valve. So unlike the vented blow-off valve, this one just simply recirculates that boost pressure back into the charge pipe. And this is really how a lot of OEM cars are set up. That's why if you have like a manufacturer turbo vehicle, you don't tend to hear the turbos, actually you don't tend to hear the turbos at all in most of these manufacturer vehicles. One of the reasons for that is because they use recirculation valves. So this would be an example of the charge pipe, the intake side of your charge pipe. And rather than venting that boost pressure to atmosphere, it just sends it back into the intake side of your air intake. It keeps the system quiet, but it also helps to keep the boost pressure up. So the question we're gonna be answering today is do recirculation valves actually help to keep boost pressures higher during a shift or when you let off the throttle? And if they do work, how much do they work? Okay, so as of right now, here's my plan. I am going to replace this section of pipe right here that goes to our blow-off valve. I'll just replace this with one that's got a fitting on it for a one inch. I think that is just a one inch or 25 millimeter adapter. Yep, that's a one inch. So our Turbo Smart blow-off valve will connect here to this charge pipe. And then what we'll do is we'll run a piece of one inch hose to the other side of where the turbo is to our intake charge piping. So for example, when that throttle plate shuts, our boost pressure then gets routed up here into the Turbo Smart and it sends 100% of that vented pressure back along this tubing here. This goes to our turbo here, which sends through the charge pipe and intercooler back through to this pipe. That charge pipe is a different size entirely. Dang it. Let's see what I got here. Aha! You know what I forgot that I had? I had ordered this a long time ago. Yeah, it is all silicone, which I want as much of my charge pipe to be, you know, solid aluminum as possible. Um, but I don't think a small little section of silicone like that is really gonna make a dramatic difference if it fits the blow-off valve piping. And we know it's the right size. Look at that. Yeah, baby. Totally forgot I even had this, which means we can mount our Turbo Smart right there. And now uh, I think that will be short enough to where I can just have this in a vertical position so it's not flopping all over the place. Here's how it's set up. Air filter comes in, drops down to a distribution. The recirculated air comes into that T, comes down, and then back into our turbo. And of course, this side's all gonna be in negative pressure, so we're constantly drawing air in through here, 
and so that blown off air will just flow right back down into the turbo and that should spool our turbo faster. And now I've just got to reconnect this hose to our turbo smart over there and then we got our turbo smart side all hooked up i got our vacuum line hooked on to the turbo smart and um, that routes underneath and back over there to that side to the intake so let's give this sucker a try and we'll see how it sounds now before we do the testing and i run this thing i want to replace this air filter so i've got here one of the best air filters that money can buy this is an am dry flow brute force the difference between the regular dry flow systems and the brute force systems are the brute force is specifically designed for off-road but this requires no oil at all so that's going to be a huge upgrade to this system because that way when i'm out at durham town or running or wherever I'm at, uh, I don't have to worry about cleaning and oiling the air filter. So big upgrade. This is what it looks like. And uh, we'll get this dropped in and then we'll record some data. Well, let's get this thing fired up. guys would not believe how hot it is right now in Florida. It's like 95 degrees out right now and it's October 14th I think. To make sure all our variables are identical, I'm gonna just run it up to operate full operating temperature here. We're just gonna try to hit a couple of first to second shifts with the same throttle inputs. shift. So we should hear that blow off happening a little bit more aggressive now. I'm going to fold this thing under and just kind of pinch that, pinch that off. I don't want any air going through there. See how I've got that pinched off? I don't want any cheating. I want as much consistency as we can get. So I've got my logs pulled up here. Now the darker of the two graphs that you see, this one here, this is the one where I have the recirculation valve connected to the intake. So the first one I did where it's connected to the intake. Now what you're seeing here is this is my throttle position. So you can see I'm stabbing the throttle. The green is the throttle position. The white here is my RPM. Okay, that's first gear, that's second gear. Here's my boost pressure in white here. 
And then you can see things like Spark Advance and VVT down here, but really we're not looking at that for this purpose. We're looking at the boost pressure, we're looking at the throttle position, we're looking at the RPM. So I overlaid that with the next four once I disconnected and I started venting to atmosphere. So this lighter line that you see me moving over is the one, is the first event that we did disconnected. So what I'm gonna do is just line these two graphs up and what I'm trying to match up is I know there's a little bit of a difference here in where I was stabbing the throttle and how much time delay and so forth. But the most important thing that I line up here is that when I get back on the throttle, this is the TPS when I'm at full throttle, I want that to line up on this side because essentially that is what's going to determine how quickly the boost pressure comes back in. There is virtually no difference here Again, we're looking at the boost pressure. So here I've kind of lined up. I, have, I, I stayed on the throttle a little bit longer here, but I came back on the throttle at the same time right here. You can see the RPM is very similar. And look at how identical the boost pressure is. I'm going to move it over just a bit. Look at that. It is utterly identical, the boost pressures. Okay, that's our first event, so we'll just keep going down the line here. This is our second event. Let me correlate that to the second. Okay, so now I've got both second poles lined up. Again, I'm going to tr try to line up what's most important is when I was getting back on the throttle, that these two green lines here match identically. Now in this case, look at this. Remember the light gray line here, that is where I'm venting to atmosphere. So we blew off, identically we blew off the exact amount of pressure here. These two lines correlate, comes up here. And in this case, I was actually getting more boost pressure quicker with the vent to atmosphere setup. But it could just be an anomaly, so let's keep going. Again, I'm, I'm just going to line these up. This is the first event and the third event. And look at how identically these lines match up. Look at that. Third event and second event. Just to show you guys the consistency here. Look at this. This is my the third event and the second event. I'm on the throttle exactly the same, exactly. Okay, so the verdict is in. Does the recirculation valve do anything to improve the boost between shifts? No, it doesn't actually do anything. And in my case, I'm probably just gonna be going back to the blow-off valve and venting to atmosphere because at least the blow-off valve has a cool sound to it. Um, do I think that there's a time and a place for the recirculation valve? Yeah. So why do the manufacturers use, almost exclusively use, a recirculation valve? I mean, there has to be a benefit or they wouldn't be using that system. And one thing to keep in mind, guys, is that the turbo on my system is just about as small as you can get. There is the very real possibility that when you're dealing with a larger displacement engine and a turbo that's putting out significantly more air volume, that when you send that back into the intake side of that charge pipe that there there is a benefit and that it's helping to keep the spool up on a larger turbo but with how tiny my whole system and setup is with that tiny little turbo i guess it's really not making a difference so in my case i'm just going to go back to the hks blow off valve
didn't think I was going to get the second gear. Shoot. thinking what I'm thinking. 